Good morning. Ah, good morning. It's on. Good, morning. <clears throat> good to see you. Welcome this morning. So glad to have you here on our uh, warm, bright, sunny, and chilly 17th of December, the third Sunday of Advent. We're so happy to see you here, and thank you for making time to join us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our pastor Blake is over with the friends at Christ Methodist because uh, Lindsay is sick. She got sick this week, so unfortunately, bad time of year for a lot of reasons for that. And hopefully, you're feeling great. We're glad you're here, and. And we appreciate uh, Pastor Sokovi being here as well with us this morning as we go to a time of worship together. But before we get started on some of our musical and message ideas, we thought we'd better tell you about some of the news of the week ahead. I want to make sure that uh, you see in the bulletin the middle section that talks about the Christmas Eve Day activities. Christmas Eve Day is a Sunday. Always kind of puts a combubberation into things because of the scheduling. Uh, but hopefully you'll remember that next Sunday on the 24th is our uh, one service only combined service, the 10 o'clock time for our message in music. The choir and friends have been working up a message in music for us that morning, so we'll be singing a lot of different carols together and hearing some different music as well at 10 o'clock in Fellowship Hall. We're going to do it in Fellowship Hall as well. So hopefully you can bring some folks along with you as well, and we'll see you there next Sunday at 10, and then of course the Fijian Language Ministry Service at the normal time at 1 o'clock. But then that afternoon it begins the, the four services of Christmas Eve with our children's service and, and at 4 o'clock over at Stony Point, uh, 6 o'clock our contemplative worship at Christ Church, 8 o'clock in here with their familiar traditions, and then 10 o'clock the Fijian language ministry service in the, in the, with the candlelight activities. So a lot to keep track of. Hopefully you're, you're able to figure some of those out at least, know which ones you're going to go to. We'd love to see you at all of them, but uh, that would be pretty much miraculous in itself. I would just have to say, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you. <laughs> so, I would just do, do want to point out a couple of things. Uh, because of the grand celebration today, um, we have a grand celebration experience. Actually, we've been experiencing it for the last three days. It started on Friday. Fijian language ministries from all over the Northern California area were here. People from San Rafael, Sacramento, all different parts of the area were here for a day's activities. And yesterday, too, in all preparation for today's welcoming of the bishop. Bishop Carcano is going to be here uh, for a reception at noon in the Fellowship Hall, and we'd love to have you join us to, for that, to say hello to the bishop and be part of that kind of commingling of our different congregations. Uh, that, that, that in itself will be, a, will be a special time for everybody. The bishop will be preaching at the 1 o'clock service this afternoon, so if you want to hear her speak, please consider yourself welcomed. And of course, what would be a, a Fijian language ministry event without a grand festivity afterwards? That's why the hall is all set up so amazingly. And so we'll have a big luncheon after the worship is over. Uh, because of the Fellowship Hall activities, we're actually holding coffee and donuts and goodies in our what's called our McMullen Room, which is as you leave the sanctuary, it's out to the left. It's, it's, uh, you'll see it because I think people know where it is and they can take you there if you don't know where it is. Come by. It's cozy, but you know, we'll, 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 we'll just huddle up together and it's space. It's got a nice feeling in the space there. We'd love to see you for coffee and donuts uh, in our McMullen Room after church. I saw the uh, envelopes are out for the 2018. Uh, pledge activities, so the, the stewardship activities. If you're an envelope person, please grab one of those in the next couple weeks, if not today, because there's just a lot of weight in there to mail. I'm just saying, just, they're, big, they're a big envelope, so we'd love to hand them to you instead. They're alphabetically listed, and they're sitting on the credenza out there in the lobby of our church, so please grab one of those as you're thinking about it. I was told, too, that it's not too late to get a dedication in Fort Poinsettias. Is it, is it, Linda? You can still do that, right? Is it an $18 donation suggested? Look at these poinsettias. These have got to be the most amazing poinsettias. And they're, they're just beautiful in the rooms. They're upstairs. You guys see them upstairs in Fellowship Hall. They're all sorts of places. If you want to get in on that, let us know today because we'll be putting together the booklet uh, in honor and memory of people if, uh, in the poinsettia offering. Uh, yeah, and socks. It's not too late for getting out socks. We gave away the gifts to the Giving Tree this last week. So uh, it's been a full week. And we're also under construction next door. If you haven't heard about that, the, the Wesley House is moving to a parsonage, back to its kind of full circle, back to its roots, but in a new way, in a modern way. So things are a little bit, a little bit scrambled around here during the week with the office activities, but you'll find somebody, I promise you. We're around, we're just not in our usual spots anymore. Well, thank you all that are working on that project. So there's all the things of the week ahead. Some of that's on the card here as well. Uh, though I did notice that we said that the all-church worship on the card was at uh, noon. That's not correct. It's 1 o'clock, so we'll fix that. And caroling. Oh, I forgot. We've been doing caroling at R.L. Stevens School now for a number of years. If you like to sing carols 
or if you like to support children in our community, or if you're especially feeling like you need a, some uplift, come join us because all three of those things will happen at one time on that morning of the Wednesday the 20th. All are welcomed, all are welcomed. The only requirement is, is that you bring a smile and maybe a little joy to share with kindergartners or sixth graders. There's about 600 of them, just saying. So come on out and join us. We'd love to have you there. So let's stand as we're able. We're opening song, Angels from the Realms of Glory. the Beer Cedar Borg family. This Advent, we are hoping for finding peace in what we have. After a season of the angst, many of us are at our very end. Here at the end, we come back to the beginning, to this season of beginnings, to fresh starts and restarts. Emmanuel, who is the Prince of all peace, come into the world again. Restart the peace in our hearts. Thank you, folks. Good to have you here. And speaking of good to have you here, Bonnie's here. Bonnie House is here with her children's time and, and a little bit more this morning. She's got a little bit more this morning. Boys and girls, just come on forward and, and see what Bonnie's brought for us today. I see, you got some extra people and a basket of something. <laughs> Okay, good morning. Hi. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna have some extra fun today, something with this going on after. Um, but I wanna talk to you a little bit about this time of year. So this time of year we have lots going on, we have lots of great decorations. Have you guys seen it? It's really fun. You all need to like take a turn around because it's really pretty back here. Don't see that when we're, it's pretty up here too, Linda, don't worry, but really pretty back there. Um, and we have lots of extra decorations and stuff, and I brought with me today something we see a lot of this time of year, and that's bells. And I made one for each of you, so I'm going to pass them around, but I'm going to ask you to keep it quietly in your hand until everybody has one. <laughs> and then we'll ring them together, so we'll give Aiden his last. 
we're going to try. There we go. Okay, you want one, Kelly? Okay. Everybody has one? All right, ring them. All right. Sounds nice, doesn't it? All right, well, now we're going to put some music to it, so I'm going to ask the congregation to sing one verse of Joy to the World. And you guys ring your bells. Ready? One, two, three. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Very good. All right, that was kind of joyful, wasn't it? All right, well, take a good look at those bells. And does anybody know how a bell works? What makes it have that sound, that joyful sound? Yeah, but what makes it, what makes it make the noise? There's a little metal ball inside that hits the surrounding metal stuff, and it makes a little ringing sound. Exactly. So there's a little thing inside that causes that. And you know what? We're like that, too. We have something inside of us that makes us feel joy. And that's our love of Jesus in our hearts. All right? Did you know that it says in the Bible that even though we can't see Jesus, we believe in him and we love him. And that belief in love fills us with gracious joy. Okay? So do one more thing. Put your hand over the bell. Cover it up like this. All right, now try ringing it. What happens? Makes like a cracking noise, not a very joyful sound, is it? Okay, well, the same thing with us. Sometimes during the holidays, we get so wrapped up in all that's going on, especially adults. Like, we get caught up in the decorations and the gifts and the this and the that. You come like crazy cuckoo, crazy Christmas stress balls, right? Do you guys know any crazy Christmas cuckoo stress balls? Aubrey's rolling her eyes right now. <laughs> Okay, well, you guys can have the same thing happen. Sometimes it might be about Christmas gifts, like that thing that you really want. You start getting so focused on that thing you really want that we forget about the true meaning of Christmas. And the true meaning of Christmas is to go to these parties and give these gifts and celebrate the joy of the birth of Jesus. All right? So we want to ring out, not just this time of year, but all year long, our joy from our hearts. Okay? All right, quick prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for allowing us to celebrate the birth of Jesus this time of year. Help us to ring out the joy right now and all year long. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, like we said, we have a special plan for the clan. Plan for the clan now. Uh, Milani's family's here with uh, her daughter Kelly. Kelly's there with her. Uh, her son, Aiden. Kelly, you were in this church like about Aiden's age, weren't you? I believe so. You go, you, this is definitely part of your growing up experience. So why don't you bring down the family, the rest of the family, and uh, Pastor Sokove is going to lead us in our baptism today of Aiden Shanley. Can you just turn uh, with me to your hymn book, page uh, 39? Page uh, 39, the baptismal covenant 2. That's the format we are going to follow during this uh, special occasion. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into God's Christ Holy Church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. On behalf of the whole church, 
I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace. Promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. I do. Will you nurture your child or your children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, yeah and to lead a Christian life? I will. And this is a question to all the congregation. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yes. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and the life and include these persons now before you in your care? Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scripture of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life everlasting. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for the water. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We pray that you may pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who will receive it. The water signifies the washing away of our sins and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. We pray in this in Jesus' name. Amen. Adrian Willem Shenley, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. May our good Lord shine upon your life and bless you. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for this child, and we believe through this sacrament of baptism, we receive this child to be a member of this church. Lord, we pray for the upbringing of this child. Tande, 
he will come to a point of believing to have faith in you and accept you as his Lord and Savior. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
The scripture lesson today is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades but the word of our God will stand forever. So we sing of that Isaiah text, number 210. Ezra, well, let's stand on the total idea. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we bow before thee in your presence this morning. We acknowledge your presence with us. We are so thankful. We as your people, as we come to you to worship you. You have heard the sounds of our songs, our singing this morning. And we also thank you for the scriptures that have been read to us. As we try to explain the meaning of your word, which was written at that time and the situation, we try to apply it to our lives today. And we thank you for your Holy Spirit. He's with us. He's our teacher. He will explain to us the meaning of your word. As I share your word this morning. 
pray, love, that you may give me the strength to share your word broadly to your people this morning. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Comfort, comfort me, comfort my people, says the Lord. This chapter begins with God giving comfort to his own people. Why God's people at that time needed comfort? The first chapter, the first 39 chapters of this book, the people of God had been threatened by the Lord of their sins. Isaiah lived in the day when many changes have come to the people of God. Their forefather before them had excelled in godliness, many of them. But in Isaiah's time, the truth of God was being threatened lightly, was being treated lightly. Righteousness was being lost among those professing godliness. The land was becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah. Morality was lost. Spirituality was being lost. And from the beginning of this book, in chapter 1, verse 9, of this prophecy, Isaiah said, Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom. We would have been like Gomorrah. It was these godly remnant, these survivors, that Isaiah was called on to give comfort to those who felt the problem of the day, to those who cared for the cause of Christ in the day, those who bear the burdens of sin and hearing the wicked things, which were done often in the name of the religion, even at the day. And to these God sends the prophet and he says to them, comfort. Comfort my people. In these early chapters of Isaiah, the continual threat of war, the Assyrians were to come and destroy many of the cities. So the Lord's people needed comfort at their hour. And they were going to need comfort in the future. There was another enemy to come, the Babylonians, in their turn to attack Jerusalem. And they carried the people away captive for many years. It was in this context, with that setting in mind, and with those circumstances in mind, Isaiah comes in the name of the Lord, and he does what he is commanded to do, comfort Comfort my people, says your God. You know, the world has its own form of comfort today. It tells us to look on the bright side. The way the world comforts is by reminding us that we should turn up the music a little higher. We should fill our glass with champagne and forget our troubles. But that only solves it for a short time. Tomorrow we have to face those troubles all over again. The Bible does not give comfort as the world gives. The word of God gives comfort of a spiritual kind. And that is what Isaiah is here instructed by God to give to the people comfort, comfort my people, 
says, Dear God, Dear friends, God's people today need comfort. Not that sort of comfort which comes from a bottle of whiskey. Not that comfort which comes from turning music up a little louder. Biblical comfort comes from the mouth of God. The Lord's people need that comfort today because of the state of the world, because of the state of the church, and because of their own state, which they know to be so imperfect. And the Lord offers us comfort in this passage. And I would like to share three things that the Lord offers us. One, God is rich in mercy and he comforts those who trust in him. God is rich in mercy and he comforts those who trust in him. The Bible describes God that he is the God of all comfort. God is near to those who fear him. And he will hear the cries. God is concerned about his people's feelings. He is concerned for his people's emotion, for their thoughts. He is able to comfort them as nobody else can comfort. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, tells us a story about a woman who has been sick for 12 years. And she had been to many doctors. She had spent all she had. Instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him, behind the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, Jesus turned around in this crowd and said, who touched me? The disciples said, Lord, you see the people crowding against you? And you ask the question, who touched me? The Lord said, somebody touched me. And the woman came forward trembling. And Jesus said to her, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has saved you. That very word from Christ can heal the body, can heal the mind, can heal the heart, can heal the soul of his troubled people. Dear friends, the kind of comfort that God gives is comfort that goes straight to the heart. The words in verse 2 speak tenderly. In Hebrew Bible meaning, speak to the heart. God speaks to the heart of those whom he intends to comfort. And he comforts them by reminding them of the truth. The comfort God gives is to speak to the people. Speak to Jerusalem and proclaim to her. And the way which God ministers to the needs of the conscience, the heart, and the souls of his people is by reminding them of their relationship to him. Remind them their warfare is accomplished and their sins is pardoned. The warfare in which we were was the warfare in which we were the enemies of God. There is a lifelong war between the sinners and God. But when the sinners came to faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord, that warfare is over. The warfare is accomplished because he says iniquity is pardoned. Their sins are now forgiven. 
It is because of Christ's finished work that the people of God have their peace and have that comfort. And there is no peace or comfort in the world apart from God and what he had done, the death upon the Christ. It is the blood of Jesus that speaks peace to the soul. It is the blood of the cross that speaks peace within and to the heart of his people. Secondly, repentance is the number one need of the world. Repentance is the number one need of the world. In verse 4 says, Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged place a plain. This is the description of the effect of the preaching of John the Baptist. John urged the people to repent. John urged the people to change the ways of living. Society today has become unequal. The rich were very rich. The poor were very poor. This is symbolized by these mountains and these valleys. The mountains symbolize those that were powerful. And the valleys symbolize those that had nothing. Society has become unfair, unjust, unrighteous. And there is going to be a difference. The valley will be exalted. The mountain and hills brought down low through the preaching of the truth. The crooked should be made straight. And this referred to man's lives today. The crooked ways, the deceitful practices, the hypocritical ways of representing things. They are going to change. And the Bible says, and the rugged place are plain. That is a great comfort to all of us. And it was in the days of Isaiah. Repentance is what the world most needs to hear preached. The preaching of repentance is most needed in our time today. Nothing does more good in our soul than the preaching of the doctrine of repentance towards God. Isaiah was the kind of preacher who will not be welcome in most churches today because he is preaching, his preaching was straight and forward. He never hides the truth and touches man's conscience. And so their deepest need was an inward change. They needs to control their lust. They needs to humble their pride and to correct their foolish ways. During John the Baptist time, all of these changes took place. The multitude came and surrounded him. As they listened to his preaching, they were baptized, confessing their sins in the river Jordan. And as I give this to the people, a comfort. Dear friends, when you and I begin to repent of our sins, this is the beginning of comfort. Repent towards God and looking to Jesus Christ who was crucified for us all. Thirdly, the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. In verse 5, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. But Isaiah comes to the climax of all the comfort that he gives. 
the glory of the Lord will be revealed. What is he talking about? What does the prophet mean? The answer is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into the world. The glory of the Lord being revealed means the birth of Jesus Christ into this sinful world. Now he is called the glory of God because the fullness of the Godhead dwells in Christ. He is God. He is equal to the Father and to the Spirit. <coughs> he is called the glory of the Lord and that glory is revealed when Jesus comes and born in Bethlehem. He is born of Mary in the stable, laid in a manger, and grew up in this world. He preached and performed miracles. He died on the cross. And that is the glory of the Lord revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. The people do so through the knowledge of the Christian faith, which is now become a universal throughout all nations. My dear friends, wherever the gospel of Christ is preached, these words are being fulfilled. Christ, through the gospel, is being lifted up and drawing all men to himself. And the nations are coming to the knowledge of the truth. All men are being blessed in Christ. The earth is becoming full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And that is the encouragement that you and I have. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Let us pray. Lord, open our minds to understand the meaning of your word. Open our hearts today to receive what you have for us. Comfort and peace only comes from you. We can only receive if we abide ourselves to you and acknowledge through our faith that you are our Lord and our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
these prayers. O merciful, almighty God, you who bring us peace and comfort, hear us now as we pray. Here in this season of Advent, we remember the words of Isaiah, prepare the way, open new highways for the Lord. And in our own words, we say, help us restart hope and joy, love and peace. For these are the words of God. The message is eternal and always. We come to you in this time of prayer, seeking especially healing of body, mind, and soul for those on our hearts, those in our caring corners, and for ourselves as well. So in a moment, within our own personal life, we take time in our silence to lift to you those prayers. All are waiting for the promised one, we sing. The promised one, Emmanuel, God with us. To the glory of the Lord, we pray. We pray in the spirit of this Advent season as we come to you now with our offering, making these gifts each in our own way, not only for the glory of the Lord, but for the ministry of Jesus here in our community and around the world. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, we praise you and give you thanks as we come to you. You are worthy to be praised because you are God. You are the everlasting God and you are the creator. We believe, Lord, that we owe nothing to you. The Bible says we are born with nothing. We will also go out with nothing. And thank you for what we have received from you. And we thank you for all your blessings. Our gift this morning, it's a token of our love for you. And we thank you, Lord, for the life that you have given to us. And we thank you for what we have received from you. And we thank you also for what we have given to you this morning for your church. Lord, hear our prayer we offer to you in and through the name of Jesus Christ who taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. As you go out today, may the glory of the Lord shine upon your life. May the peace of God be with you, and may the strength that we experience be over us today and always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you.